This is Godot, which I just learnt yesterday. I followed this Brackies tutorial and made a cute little platformer game. I have no idea how this works, and I have no idea what game to make, and whatever state this is in, I have to show my dad, and I've only got 59 minutes. After a little while of thinking, I came up with the game plan. I'm gonna steal this game my dad really likes. It's got koalas, it's got rockets, it's got power-ups, it's got bullets, it's amazing. And it shouldn't be too hard to make, right? <laughs> I literally don't know how this works. But I thought the best place to start would be to make a player. Now Godot uses no... I'm not going to bore you with technical details. But what Godot uses is a lot different to what I'm used to. Which is Unity and uh, Scratch. <laughs> and this is similar, but also quite different. Ah, uh, create. The script stayed empty for a while. But then I had an anime flashback to the Brachis tutorial I watched. Project settings, input map. And here we can add some actions. Project settings, input map. Yeah, um, add new action. I added the actions for both players, but there's a big problem. <laughs> See, the game I'm copying, the player rotates and you tap to move forward. But for this, there's four directional keys to move up, down, left, right, which is a completely different movement system. So it won't work for the game I'm making. But I was too dumb in the moment and didn't figure that out until later. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> I don't know how to get input in Godot. I have to use Google a lot. What? Oh, I don't know how this works. Why is there an error? The error here is used space for indentation instead of tab. What it's complaining about is white space, the invisible stuff you can't see. See, I clicked the space key instead of using the tab key. In normal languages and scratch, <laughs> white space actually doesn't matter. But here it does. You can't see it, it's invisible. But I copied the wrong code anyway. So I copy pasted the right code, copy pasted more code to make it actually move. I legit don't even know how to move a thing in the world. Then I copy pasted an image for the rocket. And after a good 12 minutes, I reckon it's time we give it a play. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Great. I rearranged stuff and yapped, but ah, yeah, look at that, that actually worked. <laughs> okay, now we need another rocket. Ha, huh, that actually worked. What? Aside from the movement actually being completely wrong, there's only one more thing I need to change before I can mark players as complete. Now I want to see if I can make it so you can um, go off the screen here and you'll turn up the other side. Godot, wrap around screen. Oh, in two minutes. So much filler. Copying it and it's wrong. What are they doing? What? Okay, apparently I need to put an at symbol in but the tutorial doesn't. They're built different. In Unity, I'd be able to make this like instantly, but Godot is different because it's a different game engine and it uses a different programming language called GD script, not geometry dash script, Godot script, and it's different. Oh! What? I can't believe that actually did. <laughs> it's not smooth whatsoever. But I don't really care. Now, I could mark this as completed. But we have used a third of the time, and the game doesn't look very promising. So I ignored all the problems and added a background in. <laughs> I just realised, the original game, you just spun, and you could only click to move forward. This, you can move with all the arrow keys, which is good and all, but it's a different game. <laughs> Maybe I can change it. I don't really know. So I decided to ignore the problem and work on the next aspect of the game plan. All a power-up needs to do is show up and when a player touches it, it gives them the power. It really shouldn't be that hard to make. But first we need an image for the power-up, which I... <laughs> that looks... <laughs> uh, yep, there we go. This is a power-up, okay. And now the power-up should make it so you can shoot something with your rocket or something. Yeah, that's that's gonna be our bullet. Maybe instead of the power-up, I can just make the bullet first. All the bullet needs to do is show up, move, and if it touches another player, it kills them. Surely it can't be that hard. Okay, remember that I said I learnt Godot yesterday? To make some things show up in Scratch, you use the clone block. In Unity, you instantiate a prefab. And in Godot, you instantiate a, a scene which is different, I don't know. I had to use a lot of Google here. I don't know what that's... Uh, it's not doing anything. So I modified the code and... <laughs> oh dear, they're a bit big! <laughs> dear. Well, at least they showed up and moved. I scaled it down to a reasonable size, but it's also moving the rockets a bit as well. I don't know, the collision and mask... The layer and mask, it's weird. 
I've got less than half the time remaining. I don't have a game yet. Oh dear. Um. Remember, in 30 minutes, I have to play this game with my dad in whatever state it's in. At the moment, I've only got the player with incorrect movement, a power-up which doesn't do anything, a bullet projectile that moves in only one direction and doesn't do anything else, so I kind of threw away the game plan and scrambled to salvage this mess into something playable. Collision object. Oh dear, I don't know. Ah. <laughs> so I don't have collision with the rocket yet. That is pretty big. So work on something else if I don't know what to do. <laughs> I imported the relaxing space jazz by the wonderful Kevin McCloy and set up Godot's audio system. Maybe I'll change the movement to be how it's meant to be in the game I'm copying. Because what I've got at the moment is actual trash. 20 minutes left. I've got nothing. The last stretch was really demotivating. 40 minutes ago, I was really excited because Godot made making games exciting again. I have so many unfinished Scratch games, even a still unreleased Steam game. They just got so overwhelming. I couldn't release anything without them being perfect. But Godot, oh, wait, something's working. <laughs> Though it's spinning, you still move with the four direction key. So I just need to redo the entire movement system. Yesterday, Godot was fun because I got to learn something new and there wasn't any pressure. Well, now there's a lot of pressure. Less than 15 minutes to finish. <laughs> it's so broken! <laughs> oh, no. I did intense googling, just to try and get something to make the player actually move how it's meant to. Okay, so we don't have the rockets being able to move, because I don't know how- oh. Um... got 10 minutes. So let's try and get some semblance of a game by making the power-ups actually show up. You can't move. Okay, so I may have created another problem. But I instead just focused on making the power-ups actually collectible. They should play this nice little- How? How? I've got no clue what I am doing. I don't have a game. I don't have a game. The final minute had arrived. I resorted to looking through my browser history to find a tutorial that worked to get player movement that works. If I can't get the rest of the game, having just the movement, it will be good enough. There'll be something, but you know it's getting really bad when I have to put my leg up on the chair. That was, that was intense. Let's just play the game. So is this the game? Yeah. What do I do? Like, uh, is there keys? Move. The movement's broken. So I can't move. So there's rockets and some noise. What's it supposed to do? Anyway, I'm I'm happy so far, but it looks like it just needs a little bit more time. I had failed. <laughs> but so what? Although I didn't have an end result, I got to learn a bit more about Godot. And I actually really like it. It's got all the power of Unity and the refreshing simplicity of Scratch. I might use it more often.